Charles H. McNider Museum was built from 1920 to 1921 by the Berg Keeler family. Berg Keeler was an executive with the Mason City Brick and Tile Company. And he built this house to be a showcase of brick and tile designs that his company could create. It's built in the style of an English Tudor, which originates in the 16th century. However, uh, it has many, many unique features throughout the house of tile. When you walk through the McNider Museum, you'll see all sorts of patterns and terrazzo floors, basket weave patterns of tile, very interesting things. Another interesting feature of the building we now house the McNider Museum in is that it was built using concrete and hollow tile walls. This provides um, some very interesting uh, challenges for the staff as they work to hang pictures and um, install modern uh, conveniences inside the building. Although this building was built during uh, the beginning of what we would call the Roaring Twenties, it still sticks to that English Tudor theme on the inside. It has walnut woodwork throughout the building. And in one of the galleries, you can see an area that used to be an old um, solarium garden room that has the original brickwork on the inside, that, on the outside that's now on the inside. The Burr Keeler family lived here for a number of years before Mrs. Keeler passed away and thus the family moved to California. The house was sold to a number of other uh, individuals in Mason City and it was finally bought in 1948 by the local Catholic Church to house um, some of the sisters that worked at a nearby Catholic school that was just across the bridge. In 1965 it became on the market once again and the city of Mason City um, was interested in that time to create an art museum. It was purchased by the McNider family as a gift to the city of Mason City with the stipulation that it provide a arts experience, an American art experience, for the community of Mason City. The museum went from its original 6,000 square feet to more than 20,000 square feet when it celebrated its 50 year anniversary. So it originally opened in 1966 and at that time um, everything was being renovated. They had just hired a new director, Dick Leet, but within just a few years, by 1968, the museum put on its first edition and that was paid for by the Portland uh, Cement Company in honor of the General Hanford McNider. Several other editions were put on throughout the years. Most notably in 1978, a major edition was put on with the Salisbury Room on the back, as well as the McNider Education Wing that was named for Margaret McNider. In the early 1990s, the final edition was put on in the back, named for Dr. Luke Chang, whose family enjoyed the pottery studio here for many years. Being an English Tudor style home, it had many unique features when it was built. As I mentioned already, there were a lot of different types of brick and tile, and you can see that in the detail work on the front of the building. There's also many uh, pieces of intricate carving, not only in the house, but on the exterior, including the entrance. We're often asked if our roof is bad, and it is not bad, it is actually a new roof. It is what's called a shake, shingle roof that's been steam bent. So very few homes in the United States 
still have this. It would have been built at that time to look like a thatched roof or a fairy tale type of cottage, which would have been popular during the original uh, English Tudor style. You would have bought these shingles from even the local hardware store at the local place that manufactured the goods to uh, construct the house. And oftentimes they actually were in colors um, that were more pastel that um, gave that look of a storybook nature. This is the third roof that the house has had. It had a replacement in the 1980s. And then again, um, it was replaced in 2008 due to significant hail damage that was done several years prior. Go ahead. How the roof is made is using cedar shingles that are held over a vat of steaming hot, 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 hot water. And they are formed to the different curves and the different architectural details that are on the house. Every house of this style is unique. And so every single shingle, when it was reshingled, had to be individually and hand created using an architectural diagram. So members of the Burkeeler family have come back over time to visit the home as it is sort of kind of their ancestral home. And one of the gentlemen that came a number of years ago really talked a lot about his father growing up in the home and said that there were some sort of secret compartments and passageways, things like that, that he had gone into as a child. Now, we've never found any full passageways, but we have found some areas where they would have removed panels to hide valuables in case of a robbery. The first one would have, was in the area that would have been the dining room, and they would have held, held in there expensive silver, coins, things of that nature. The other one is in the doorway, which this would have been a bedroom at the time, and you can already hear the panel squeaks. So there's a mechanism, which we have not yet found out, that would swing this open. Now, I highly recommend if you visit the museum that you not try to open it. <laughs> But it's kind of interesting for visitors to know that it's here. Having been built at this impressive 6,000 square feet, it was a very large house. And the Burke Keeler family would have had live-in help, which was not that uncommon at the time. So the museum is actually three stories tall with a staircase going up to an apartment area with rooms upstairs where the help would have uh, lived. When the museum uh, was first created in the 1960s, they actually provided for a living caretaker to live here, um, as well as perform some of the janitorial duties at the same time. The museum also uh, utilizes, we have a rear staircase would have been called you know a back stairs and that would have been used um, by um, the persons working in the building uh, to shuttle sheets and things like that food up and down um, the stairs and you know being a modern building we've had to find uses for some of these older um, parts of the museum um, my favorite one that we've ever used um, is possibly using uh, file cabinets to be stacked on top of the original bathtub as well as installing um, internet cables and wiring in the original laundry chute because it was so difficult to get through those hollow tile walls I was telling you about earlier. Mm -hmm.